Now we turn our attention to axial rods in compression and when the two materials are acting in parallel as opposed to our previous example where they were acting in series. So in this case we have a circular concrete cross section with a solid circular steel bar embedded inside and placed concentrically with the concrete. So basically this, would, this is the cross section right here, four inch diameter concrete with an elastic modulus of three times 10 to the six PSI and a concentric steel bar, solid one inch diameter with an elastic modulus of 29,000 PSI. And uh, what we want to know is when this pillar is subjected to a load P, how much of it is going to go to the steel and how much of that load is going to be carried by the concrete. Clearly they are both resisting the load, but we need to find out how much of it goes to the concrete, how much of it goes to the steel, and how much does this point here deform? What's the vertical deformation as a product of the compressive load? Very well. So, first of all, here we need to apply a fundamental principle of compatibility. So, we see that because both materials are in parallel, basically meaning that they both deform the same, right? When this point, this plane moves down due to the load, both the concrete and the steel deform the same amount. And that's key to solving this problem because then we can say the formation in concrete equal to the formation in steel equal to the total deformation. And again, using our basic formula for the deformation of a rod in, in tension or compression, we say that the deformation in concrete is the total load going to the concrete times the length divided by the area of concrete, divided by the elastic modulus of concrete. That has to equal the load carried by the steel times the length, divided by the area of steel, divided by the elastic modulus of steel. From this equation, we can obtain a relationship between the load carried by the steel and the total load carried by the concrete. Clearly the lengths will cancel out and we get this expression that says that the load carried by the steel will equal to the area of steel divided by area of concrete times the elastic modulus of steel divided by the elastic modulus of concrete. These ratios are very important, and so we give them a special name. This one here is called the reinforcement ratio, rho, and it's very important in reinforced concrete design, and it's basically the area of steel divided by the area of concrete. And this one here, it's the modular ratio, and it's usually denoted by the letter N. In this case, this number is roughly 10, more exactly uh, 9.7, which is 29 divided by 3, right? So, in this case, we can conclude that the load going to the steel member, it's going to be area of steel, which in this case is pi, 1 square divided by 4, that's the diameter, the, the area of the, of the steel bar of one, diam one inch diameter, divided by the 
area of concrete, which now we have to be a little bit careful because the area of concrete is not pi 4 squared divided by 4. It's pi 4 squared divided by 4 minus pi divided by 4 because it's basically going to be a kind of donut shape like this, right? Because we are basically subtracting the area of steel from the total area. And so in that case, we are left with this resulting shape here. So this would be pi 4 square divided by 4 minus pi 1 square divided by 4. So let's call that rho. So that would be 0 0.7853 divided by, let's see, the pi's here will cancel, so we can, we don't have to deal with that. The fours will cancel, we don't have to deal with that. So let's just simplify this whole thing and say this is 1 divided by 16 minus 1. Right? The price cancel, the four in the denominator cancel, and we are left with basically 1 over 15. And N, as mentioned before, is simply the elastic modulus of steel, which is 29 times 10 to the 6, divided by the elastic modulus of concrete, which is 3, 10 to the 6. The 10 to the 6 cancel, and we are left with 29 divided by 3. So, from here, let me keep concrete there, from here we can uh, determine that the load in the steel is going to be 1 over 15 times 29 divided by 3 times the load in the concrete. So it gives you a ratio of how big one is with respect to the other. So this is 29 over 45 feet of concrete. Right. So slightly over half. If we use this relationship here, and we now add one more equation, what equation would that be? We have already used compatibility, so now we need to use equilibrium, right? So our equilibrium equation would come from here, and it would say that the total load would be equal to the load carried by the concrete plus the load carried by the steel. This number here is approximately equal to 0.64 feet of concrete. So we can substitute in this equilibrium equation here for P of steel, which we know is 0 0.64 feet of concrete and from here we get P equal 1.64 PC, and from here we get the total load going into the concrete, it's 1 over 0.64, which is approximately 0.609 P. Clearly subtracting 1, because they have to add up to the total load, the load going to the steel is 0.609 one of the total load. So approximately 60% of the load is carried by the concrete, 39% carried by the steel. If we want to continue on and calculate the deflection, we simply have to substitute in 
either one of these equations, this PC, put it there, we know the area of concrete, we know the elastic modulus of concrete, we know the length, and so from there we can simply uh, calculate it, right? And so just select whatever is your actual load acting on this column, this pillar, and substitute through the equations. So this is how you calculate the relative load when two materials or more are in parallel, right? In parallel means that they have the same deformation and the loads add to obtain the total load. This is a very meaningful problem in reinforced concrete design.